All right, good morning. How's everyone doing? Let me just do a quick refresher here on the computer just to make sure everything is showing up for you guys at home. Excellent. All right, so this is Paint with Lovejoy. Just pulling up my chat and my reference photos. Yeah, so this is Paint with Lovejoy. We do a daily demo. Um, we've been doing this every day for a couple of months now, um, and it's been great practice. So what you are looking at in front of you, we've got our colors here. I am in on an eight by 10 panel, so it's a little flat. Some of you may be painting on a stretched canvas, so there's a little bit more width here. Um, and when you paint the background or when you paint your color that gets close to the edge, I do recommend if you're on a stretched canvas to carry that color over the side. Um, what you're also seeing here is we already have our composition drawn on the canvas. So you've got two options for this. You can pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Or there's a link in the description box below, um, and you can purchase what I call a traceable off my website. You purchase it, download it, print it out, and then with carbon paper, you transfer this to your canvas. And for my first time painters, the traceable is a nice way to not have to stress about drawing, and that way you can get your image on here and jump right into painting. Now, whichever option that you use, um, doesn't matter which one, but just uh, pick up the video for the painting portion. Um, on this one, I actually go over my traceable lines with a Sharpie marker, so that way it's nice and bold for you guys at home if you're gonna pause the video and draw what you see. Um, you do not have to do the Sharpie marker or the black outline once you transfer your traceable, because you will notice that your traceable lines will be um, from the carbon paper a little bit lighter. Okay, so let's say, oh right, we got a lot of people jumping on and I am testing out my new laptop today. So it's a little closer and definitely much easier for me to read, even though I still need to get glasses. All right, so let's see. Hi Rhonda and Tammy and Margaret and Denise and Annette and Alma. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh, jumping on. I see a few new names that I haven't seen on the chat before, so thanks for uh, checking this out. Uh, we're developing a really nice community here. I'm very excited about it. Okay, so for our peacock today, we are actually going to paint the background so that way this can dry. And then in today's painting, we're actually going to get really um, comfortable and a lot of practice with making some of these really skinny lines. So we're going to be playing with the pressure of our brush with that pointy brush. So. Before we get to that point, we got to put our base color on here, and this is going to be a light kind of creamy color, and then we'll use lots of um, greens and yellows, and then we'll have that really pretty blue for the body of our peacock. And, oh, I forgot to put the raw sienna on here. There it is. All right, to make our cream color, we're actually going to do a mixture of white with a touch of yellow and then a little bit of raw sienna. And if you feel like switching out and doing a different color or darker colors than what I'm gonna use, go right ahead. You have full permission to switch it out. And I actually just realized I need to make quite a bit, so I threw a bunch of yellow on there. I'll throw some more white. And then I'm gonna add a touch of the raw sienna. So you're kind of going about equal parts, yellow and white to kind of that creamy color. And then I wanna just make it a little more earthy, tone it down so it's not so bright. So by adding some of that raw sienna, um, it gets us to kind of a warmy beige, warmy cream color. And like I said, you can switch it out if you wanna do a purple background, and I've had some students do that on this painting. Um, some people did darker browns. Uh, I think one lady actually did uh, yellow, or uh, not yellow, red, and then had the nice green. So you have full permission to deviate from the painting. So as we're filling in this area, I want you to try a few different brush strokes. You've got kind of your full width of a brush stroke. You can turn that brush sideways in a little bit skinnier mark. And the one you'll see me use today and generally everybody's favorite is literally just slapping that uh, paint on the canvas. Um, so we're going to be going right from these uh, lines. We'll leave those little eye holes, uh, uh, eye feather uh, areas. And paint right around them. All right, and again, if you're on a stretched canvas and you make it to the edge, just carry that color around the sides. 
And should you paint anything on the inside of your peacock today, or if you get some paint on the inside of um, those eye feathers areas, um, don't stress out. We'll be putting darker colors on top of it and acrylic paint. When it dries, you can layer more paint on top of it. It's basically your painting. Try not to stress out about too much today. The point of painting is just to kind of relax and escape the world for a little bit. And my particular channel, Paint with Lovejoy, is geared towards first time and beginner painters. Um, and that's been kind of my niche market for the last 10 years. Um, it is mainly adults that I've taught, but since the YouTube channel has been more and more popular, I'm getting tons and tons of kids and people of all ages, really. Um, my videos are geared towards, no matter what your age is, just learning to paint for the first time and breaking down um, some of the intimidating and scary factors of it so that way they're not so scary and you can find your creative outlets. All right. And again, I am using student grade paint. Um, when I mix it with the white, it's not as transparent as some of the other colors. So it's not too bad on the transparency today. But if you are working with paint that happens to be rather transparent, you've got two options. You can apply it a little bit thicker or uh, let it dry and apply a second coat. Totally your call. And you will always kind of adjust based on the variables that you're dealing with and your variables are your paint, your environmental factors, you know, whether you're outside, it might dry faster compared to painting inside. Um, and even your emotional context, how you're feeling while you're painting. You know, if you've had kind of a rough or a stressful day, it will affect your painting. It's still good to paint, um, but you might have angrier brush strokes, more emotional brush strokes. And I've seen that happen with a lot of my students. Um, so don't not paint when you're feeling that emotional. Just paint, slap the paint on there and just get it out. All right, so we are gonna do a little bit of wet on wet blending with this. I want a few areas. I don't want it just the same color. And again, anything that I do on my videos is completely optional. So I'm gonna want a few areas that are gonna be a little bit darker. So I'm actually gonna grab this raw sienna by itself. And we're basically just gonna kind of slap it on top of our background color paint. And then I like to wipe off the extra paint. And then you go back here and with light pressure, you're just kind of moving that new color, squishing that new color into your base color. And you do need your background to be wet and the new paint that you introduce is wet. So this is called wet on wet blending. And it is one of the more therapeutic aspects in the beginning stages of painting. And it's just nice to kind of move the paint, see what it looks like when it blends. The more you move your brush, the more the two colors will mix together. So again, just kind of observe, play with the pressure. Light pressure will give you a little bit of a smoother look. More pressure is gonna be a little bit more um, expressive brush strokes. Both are fully acceptable and both are awesome. And like I was saying earlier, um, one day you may be feeling very expressive and your brush strokes show up a lot. Another day, maybe you're feeling a little more um, calm and you want them smooth. Totally okay to have varying styles from day to day, especially um, as you're beginning painting. The more you can try different things, the more you can develop your own style a little bit quicker. All right, so I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to wipe that brush off, but I'm going to do it with white paint just so there's a few lighter areas. And you can introduce other colors. It doesn't have to be the same color I'm using. So we'll put some white here. And you will notice that the lighter colors, your whites and lighter colors that you introduce, get eaten up a lot quicker in your base color compared to a darker color. And the more that you paint and get comfortable with the process, the more you'll just kind of understand that naturally and um, adjust. But when you're in your beginning stages, your brain's taking in a lot of information. So be kind to yourself. And a lot of stuff that you learn the first time that you paint makes more sense the second, third, and fourth time you paint. So painting, the practice of painting is basically compounding your knowledge. So the more that you do it, the more you understand and the better you get. 
Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that background. Works pretty well. Awesome. So we're going to clean the brush and we're going to start laying our base colors. Um, we're going to be doing a really kind of that super bright neon -y yellow um, that we've done in a few other demos, kind of fill them in here. And we don't have much on the head. And then we'll start moving into these little eye feathers. So clean that brush really good. We're going to start with yellow paint and we're going to add a small amount of green until we get to kind of um, this kind of chartreuse slightly neon -y green color. And a little bit of pigment goes a long way. And we're going more for kind of this super, super bright, limey, chartreuse green color. All right. And on mine, because I did outline these with the black Sharpie marker, and because my paint is on the transparent side, I can actually paint over the whole thing and still see the black lines. Um, and the black lines for this particular section are important. I will outline them later, um, but it's going to help me determine where I'm going to be placing some of the shades uh, when we do the wet on wet blending. So if you can't see the outlines on yours, um, you can still do the same method and just paint over all these lines. And then when we're done, you can actually just go back in with black paint and reapply those lines um, if you end up covering them and can't see uh, the, them through your paint. So there's always options. And then again, carry this around the side if you're on a stretched canvas. All right. So I'm going to make just a little bit more of that color and we're going to place it um, on these little feather eye holes. I can't remember exactly what that's oh, and that is way too dark. So if you end up doing what I just did um, and you made a pretty dark green, instead of adding all that yellow, take what's kind of the green that's on your brush, make a new pile and then start adding the yellow to it compare and this this is easier to do this to kind of backtrack to get lighter instead of adding tons and tons of yellow to that particular blob um, you'll just end up wasting a lot of paint and again the more that you paint um, the more these little tricks and um, I guess kind of art hacks or things maintenance your palette and brush maintenance uh, become more and more natural All right, so just kind of filling all these in, we'll get those blue spots and the shading on top of it. Um, this will dry fairly quickly as well. And as you, we move into smaller spaces, I tend to stick with the same brush, but if you need to switch brushes, full permission, grab the pointy brush as needed or a larger brush as needed. And as you guys are painting along or eventually paint along when you watch the video or any of my videos, please email me photos of what you paint. Um, email them paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, your guys' pictures helps me promote the website, helps me promote the YouTube channel. And most people believe you before they believe me um, that I can teach them to paint. When you tell them I can teach them, it holds much more weight than when I tell them. So uh, please spread the word about this channel. Okay, so we've kind of got our base on here. Let's actually do a little bit of the wet on wet blending. We're gonna go a little bit darker here. So I'm gonna grab just a chunk of that uh, green, slap it on there, and then again, wipe that excess paint off. And we're just going to blend it right into that base chartreuse color. And here, if you are wanting your brush strokes to be a little more smooth, bring your brush at kind of a 45 degree angle. And you can avoid having those brush strokes show up compared to when your brush is kind of perpendicular to the canvas. And as you paint and blend more, this will become a little bit more common practice for you, but kind of this harsh transition. Um, if I kept blending up, the green would just keep crawling up here. So I actually need to start blending the uh, lighter color into the darker. So wipe that brush off really good. I'm gonna go back and grab some of that light colored paint. I'm gonna basically push it on here and then you start squishing it into the dark. Um, and you are gonna notice that it'll pick up the dark color 
um, and then kind of pulls it into here. So when you're blending with kind of a darker and a lighter color, it is a bit of a, a back and forth action to get this nice uh, blending to where the dark doesn't crawl into the light areas and the light doesn't get eaten into the dark areas. And like I said, the more that you paint, the more natural that process will become. Okay, so let's see. It's debating whether we move on to raw sienna next or not. Let's actually go ahead and put our first layer, because my blue is on the transparent side. We're gonna go ahead and put our first layer of the bright blue. And it, they usually are a beautiful royal blue. So I'm actually gonna use this blue directly on its own um, because it's already pretty um, close to the color we need. And likely I'll have to do two layers of this just because this is on the transparent side. So we're gonna fill in the head and chest of our peacock right now. And this is a very calming color combo with our blue and yellow and green and then even a bit of the earthiness with that raw sienna thrown in there. But we are working with what we call a limited color palette, limited colors. And you will, as you start noticing more artwork and what people create, um, there are quite a few artists that specifically use a limited palette um, and they have to create their whole, whole painting with that. And that just gets you more and more comfortable with mixing your paint, knowing what they um, look like when they interact together and how to mix those colors. So the more that you can kind of limit your tools and challenge yourself, the more you learn. So kind of like science experiments, artists set up these um, little experiments, little painting assignments and go, what can I create the whole painting with yellow and purple? Can I create the whole painting with red and green? And they set out to do that. All right. Oh, we'll put the white right on top of that. I just painted over an area that white was supposed to go on. That's okay. It's part of life. Let's see, this does go all the way around the eye. And again, if you need to move into that small pointy brush, go right ahead. All right, and then yeah, like I said, you can see that this blue is pretty transparent. It'll be nice once we put our second coat on here. All right, we got a few more people jumping on. Hi, Mike and Stacy. Excellent. Awesome. I love that we're getting more and more people uh, checking this out. Oop, one more spot before we move on to the next. Almost forgot about that little chin. All right. So while this is wet just a little bit, even though we're going to do a second coat, we're going to take a little bit of black. I'm going to put it on the front and kind of on the back, wipe that brush off again, and then that light pressure, blend a little bit of that black into the blue. And again, you're just getting good practice each time that you paint, be kind to yourself. All right, so clean that brush really good. We're gonna move into raw sienna next, and on the center of these little um, ends of the feathers. We're going to start getting our details in there. And let's say we've been about 19 minutes. All right. So for this one, we're actually just going to use the direct raw sienna. And we're basically making like a teardrop shape on the inside of these feathers. Um, but we're not filling up the entire area. And again, if you need to use the small pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. So you can kind of make a circle and then maybe just give it a little bit of a point. And then this one kind of shoots off the edge of the canvas. And then again, if you're on that stretched canvas, carry that color over the side. And if these are slightly different shapes from each one, totally okay. Um, all of our animals have unique markings. And we just assume that they're identical and balanced, but they're always, they're usually not. But they are unique to each animal. Same with like tiger stripes and leopard spots. 
Okay. So let's see, let's get a little bit of that base for the beak on there. So we're going to move down to the pointy brush and we're going to make a light gray. So moving a little bit of the white over to the black, tiny, tiny amount of black goes a long way because we're not going super dark. And I usually like to place the black right here, leave what's on my brush and then start mixing. And if I need to go a little bit darker, then I can add um, that little smear into it. And I want you guys going kind of light. I'm going to go a little bit darker just so you can, so it'll show up a little bit more on the video. But you guys can go about this color or a little bit lighter at home. And we're going to fill this whole beak in. Like I said, just getting that base coat on there and then we'll put some other colors on top. And as you play with your pressure, um, you might be holding your breath. If your brush is shaking as you touch the canvas, that does mean you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will make the process a little bit easier for you. All right, and actually before I clean that off, let's actually, we're gonna make that a little bit lighter. So go a little uh, close to almost a super light gray, almost white. We're gonna place this right here so that we have something on the canvas and then we'll put some pure white on top of it towards the end. And if you happen to get a little bit of blue in your paint, in your gray, like I did right there, just kind of smush it into it, work it into it. We'll call it a happy accident. If it ends up being a lot, um, or, and more than you wanted, take a paper towel, wipe off that smeared, kind of contaminated area, and then reapply your light gray. Okay, let's go ahead and get that little eyeball in there too so that can dry, and then we'll be at what we call the underpainting. So we're gonna give this guy a dark uh, tan eye, dark brown eye. So we're gonna pull some of that tan aside, your raw sienna, Again, we're going to add a little bit of black, and the black is pretty powerful. So I place a little bit on the side, leave what's on my brush to mix with this. And we're staying in the brown area. We're just basically making it a pretty dirty brown, uh, but not quite the pure black. And we'll go a little bit darker. And we're going to fill in this whole area. And if you happen to go over that pupil, that black pupil or the white dot, don't stress out, we're gonna reapply it later. Okay. All right, so let's see, let's work on, let's work on some of our fine lines. So as we do this, we're gonna be putting quite a few little lines, because if you you know remember peacock feathers, they have that long stem and then those little um, tiny little spiny feathers off of there. So as we do this, I want you to kind of treat your brush like a pencil, use light pressure, and try to use just the tip of your brush. Um, the more you push your brush down, the wider the line's gonna make. And if you have varying widths of lines as you do this, totally okay. Now, as we make our lines, um, it's going to be quite a bit to try to hold your hand steady here and keep a light pressure. So if you want to stick that pinky out, you can put that on kind of a dry spot and use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. That gives you a little more security and then that way you can make your lines. And again, with practice, um, this is going to become easier and more comfortable but you have to try a few different ways and you got to build up that muscle memory um, before it becomes more comfortable. So right now I'm using the raw sienna. I am going to add just a touch of water that gives me a little bit more fluidity with my paint. Um, just make sure your brush is never dripping wet with water, but a little bit of water can help. And we're going to go from the ends of each of these little uh, eye, the peacock eye feathers and we're going to be bringing it towards the body. Again, play with that pressure. We're going to be doing quite a few of these lines, so don't freak out and feel like you have to erase the first one and it's going to look kind of weird. That is part of the process. I think that's it for most of those. All right. And then again, if you need to, to kind of twirl that brush a little bit, that will bring um, the bristles a little bit closer together. 
And now we're going to work on quite a few, a few more of the longer lines that'll go off the edge. And then we're going to get these little wispies that shoot around. So again, just imagining that maybe there's a big flower out or a big uh, feather out here. Even maybe one shooting off this edge. And again, it's just getting you good practice with light pressure on your brush. And we're going to do this with a few other colors. And if you do what I just did right there, where maybe one part's a little bit wider and one part's a little bit skinnier, um, just go with the wider section and even it out. All right. And now he looks kind of weird right now. That's okay. Clean that brush. And let's see, we're going to do this with green next. We're going to go through quite a few colors. Again, just using that direct green. And we're going to start kind of right here on the base of each of these little the stems of each flower. And now these are going to kind of start to curve around. So starting at that base, I'm going right over those that line from the traceable. And I am applying my paint kind of thick, just so that way it's a bit more opaque. And then here again, remember, exhale as you touch the canvas. And then these can be kind of wispy and wavy. They can overlap each other. We're going to do this with three colors. We're going to do this with green, then we'll do it with some blue, and then we're actually going to do it with some yellow. And these little lines give a lot of personality and a lot of character to the painting. So like I said, these don't have to be perfect. And if you end up making a line that just really irritates you and you don't like it, um, do your best to embrace it as much as you can. And maybe in a couple of days, it won't be as annoying. And even after you finish the painting, it might not be as annoying. But right now, just this little weird section right here looks kind of like a weird headdress. It's going to look totally different when we fill in the rest of the area. So try not to be too judgmental of your painting um, in the middle stages of it. So going back to the next little eye feather, I'm going to fully surround this one. And then this guy has, since we do have, and we'll do it to this one too, since we have the full circle on there, or the full little egg shape oval, um, the ends of these little feathers have these interesting little extra feathers coming off of it. And I'm really proud of you for painting at home. Be kind to yourself as you're doing this. Just the fact that you're actually painting, you are already successful. And one of the best parts about painting is just the escaping of the world and transforming a blank white canvas into an illusion of some 3D object. And that technically makes you a magician, a visual magician. And you may notice that as you're kind of getting along on your painting, maybe your brush strokes just keep getting wider and wider. Mine's not too bad, but take a look at your uh, brush and check out where the metal and the bristles meet. And if you have a lot of paint buildup on there um, that's making the bristles spread apart, wipe off that excess paint. It'll bring your bristles back together and then go back and reload your brush. So another just a little bit of uh, brush maintenance as you create. And 
And as we're doing this, if there's a spot on your background that you don't like, make sure one of these lines goes right on top of it. That is the beauty of art. We call them happy accidents. So if you really don't like it, you cover it back up with paint. So moving into some of these other areas and, you know, these peacocks, when they open up their tails, they have just so many colors flying everywhere and so many of their feathers. So now we're just kind of filling up these spaces and then we'll do this with a little bit of blue. And again, these are overlapping. Move them into here. And as you're getting into these, this stage and even further along in the painting, um, I highly recommend that you prop your painting up if it's not on an easel and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. It's gonna look entirely different from that distance and that is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. So learning to look at it from that distance only helps you create um, a better painting. And as you're looking at it from a distance, if you go, oh, I want this part to be a little brighter or maybe this needs to be darker, trust that and go back and adjust your painting based on what you see from that distance. And this guy's turning out really cool. I'm liking it. Okay, so before we move into our blue, because we still have more that we're going to do, let's go into this area, and then we have a little bit of the plume on the head. There's a little bit of green hanging out in there. And I'm actually really liking this green, so I'm going to go ahead and just do the outline. I was going to do it with black, but I think it looks better with the green. And again, you can reference that traceable. I'm just going right over each of these uh, black lines that I can see through the paint. If you cannot see them on yours, um, and here we'll actually just do that anyway. If you can't see them on yours, start down here and start with your first couple of just um, U shapes or half circles. And then that way you can just kind of build, they almost look like scales, uh, one on top of the other. And again, you can notice that every two or three brush strokes, I am grabbing more paint. This is helping me apply it a little bit thicker because um, a lot of times you'll notice that you get into a groove, especially if you're doing one of my paint your pet classes and you're doing some fluffy fur, you get into a groove of making all these lines. But if you don't remember to grab more paint every couple of brush strokes, um, it's basically wasted movements because you're not actually applying anything to the canvas. Almost done. And let me take a look on the phone. Yeah, this guy's looking pretty good. All right, so he's got these cool little plumes on his head. So these are just actually gonna be little dots and some of the blue will shine through. Um, so I'm literally just making little dots. I am gonna do this again when we move into the blue. And it's okay if these dots kind of overlap each other because when we come in with the blue, I will make sure that they overlap um, the blue overlaps these. And I'll take a look in the camera in just a moment. I realize this is a dark color on top of a dark color, so I'm not sure if you guys at home can see it appropriately, but this entire kind of front forehead, uh, front of the face section, we're just filling up with some overlapping dots of this green. We 
get a few right here in the front as well. Okay, so clean that brush. We're going to move into blue paint, back to our blue paint. Whoops. And I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat on here on the neck just to kind of thicken it up before we move into doing the feathers again. And don't necessarily need to do this area. I'm going to let that green dry and we'll come back and put the blue dots on top of that. And down here where we put the blue and the black, I'm just going right over it, but we're going to reapply the black into this wet blue next. So even by doing some of your shading on what we call the underpainting, that first layer, it still helps to do the shading that you would do even though you know you're going to do a second coat on top of it. It just helps build that structure. So now I'm grabbing that black and again putting it on the inside and the outside, wipe that brush off, and then blend that black into the new blue you just applied. And I am kind of pulling that black a little bit underneath that chin area, just giving a hint of a shadow. And while we have that here and it's wet, I'm going to take a little touch of the white. Just put them right there. And again, a little bit of white goes a long way. So wipe that brush off. And we're just giving one different shade, a little highlight here. Doesn't have to be a big one. If you ended up doing that and you moved your brush a lot and lost it, um, just reapply that white again and just move your brush a little bit less. Again, with more practice, you will find your groove with that. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the blue. We've got um, these center circles. And these are going to go on top of the raw sienna and these are a bit more of just kind of a, a little bit of an ellipse or more of a circle shape. This one actually goes off the edge of the canvas. And my paint is uh, dry. My raw siennas and uh, underneath colors are dry. If yours is still wet, I would recommend that you let this dry before you start moving on to this section. Okay, and then on our peacock, there is actually a really cool plume, his little headdress right here. So I'm actually just going to use this by itself, and we're literally just going to slap it on here, make little blobs. They do kind of overlap each other, but if you imagine, I guess they're like little squares. There's like one, two, three, four, let's go for five. And we will come in with the black paint and connect that headdress to the head of our bird. So right now, we're actually just going to go back to this area, adding more of these little lines. I'm going to wipe my brush off because I've got a lot of buildup happening. And these, as we're adding these in the background, they don't have to be as numerous as um, the green paint that we added when we did this. And we will come in with some light uh, yellow green with this too. And then that should bring us into the conclusion of today's painting. Oh, a little more details on the beak. That's right. So not bad. We're going at about 40 minutes. We should finish up in the next five to 10 minutes. So if you are inclined to put any of these colors as we get into the final stages in places that I do not put them, Totally okay to do that. Feel free to switch it up and trust your instincts. Your instincts are guiding you in the direction that you need to go. Somebody else's instincts might guide them in a slightly different creative direction. So trust what works for you. All right, so I'm gonna clean that brush really good. I'm gonna go back to a bit more of that super light yellow and green. So using that yellow, just a touch of the green to keep it pretty bright. Okay. 
And this, just because it is student grade paint, it's not going to be as bold as I would like it to be. So you might have to apply yours pretty thick. And I'm actually going to add some white to mine so it's a little more opaque. There we go. So again, just making those little wiggle lines, look at your painting from the distance, see how it's evolving, what you might need. And I still wish this color was a little bit bolder and brighter, but it's just not as thick as I would like if I was doing more of my work uh, with the palette knife I'd actually move up to my artist grade paint that is on the more opaque side and it would give me um, a bit more of the pop that I'm looking for right now. So as you're in the groove of painting, um, like I said at starting out I recommend that you start with student grade paint and then maybe when you're finished with the yellow you run out of that and you have to buy it again, maybe buy the yellow in the artist grade paint one color at a time just so you can get a feel for the difference between the uh, types of paint. I personally use both student grade and artist grade paint in my professional work um, for the specific reason that I like the transparency of the student grade paint. Okay, so we're taking this light color and on the top of each of these circles, it won't be as obvious here, but it'll be a little bit more obvious on the darker green. We'll do a little bit of white when we get up to those. All right, and then we've got a few of these colors, little dots. Nope, I forgot to go in with the blue on that one too, huh? We'll come back and add that. So I'm going to clean that brush. I was just looking to see if there's other stuff to add. I'm going to move into white. Let's get a few of those highlights on. And we're going to start with the beak using just pure white. I'm going to go on the top of the beak. And it should stand out a little bit more since we have that light gray on there. And then we're going to have another little highlight that comes kind of in the middle of the beak. Let me get a refresher of white. All right, and we have a little strip of white right here that I covered up earlier. So I'm just taking that white pretty thick and just placing it right on top of the paint. And that is the nice thing about acrylic paint. Once it's dry underneath, you can take this lighter color and just paint right on top of um, other colors and it won't mix together. So if you happen to get rid of that white dot, all you have to do is just reapply it with your white paint. And let's get a few little highlights here. And these are just little dots breaking up that space. And again, it is pretty cool to take a picture uh, before you add your white, take your progress picture, and then take another picture after you add your white and just kind of see what the power of highlights can do. Um, it's amazing how much more it kind of pops forward when you add your final highlight value uh, compared to right before not adding it. So as you look at your progress photos, um, you'll start seeing your own evolution, your own growth, um, your own places that you're improving. And that is why I recommend taking your progress photos. It's one of the few things that we can visually look back on and go, oh my gosh, look how much better I've gotten. Okay, and let's see, let's, we need a light blue. We got two more things to do and then we are done with the painting. So we're making a light blue, start with the white, add a touch of blue, and these are going to almost be like little um, horseshoes, just little U shapes on top of the blue eye point, and it doesn't have to be exact. Our eye is already taking in the fact that this is a peacock, and our eye fills in the other little details with the signature um, elements of the peacock being its feathers. 
All right, last thing, clean that brush. We're gonna go to black paint. We're gonna connect that little headdress um, to the head of our peacock. And again, you've gotten great practice with your light pressure. Just connecting them all the way in. And I think I even in class had somebody do those rainbow colors. So seriously, just do whatever you want to change it up and be creative. All right, so reapply your paint for that black pupil. Let's get a little hint of a nostril in here and some definition of where the beak opens. All right, and if you need to, you can re-outline um, the eyeball, the eyeliner. And I forgot to put those little blue dots in here, so just going back with a few little blue dots and it is kind of nice to overlap the green and the blue and the lighter red or lighter uh, yellow and just for fun taking a little hint of the white I'm just going over just a little bit here a little more definition and taking a quick look in the phone not bad so I think this brings us to the conclusion of today's painting um, I do try to keep them about 30 minutes. We went a little over on this one. Um, but again, they're just great practice. You can watch this on the replay. Uh, leave any comments below if you're catching this on the replay for things you need me to answer or address. Um, any comments, uh, things you want me to paint in the future, leave those down there and I've got a new running list. And if you'd like to see the future demos, jump to my main YouTube page and scroll down and you can see the future stuff. Um, yeah, check out the other videos, keep painting, keep finding your creative outlets, share this with your community. And when you wanna challenge yourself even more than what's on YouTube, um, check out my Paint Your Pet class on Paint With Lovejoy. All right, I think that takes care of most everything. I try to address it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, um, yeah. So tomorrow, I think, as I'm looking at the stack, we got a hedgehog tomorrow, and that'll be fun. These are turning out really cute. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I will catch up with you tomorrow. Cheers.